Hey folks, just a bit of a disclaimer on this video. This isn't exactly what I set out to make the day that we filmed it. A bunch of footage we got was basically unusable just because of the wind and I'm still down a tripod since my tripod broke a few videos back. So some of the footage is really shaky or the wind is just making it impossible to hear anything. We didn't even end up coming across three of the four rare target species you were looking for. And I ended up hurting my knee pretty bad and just in general, uh, the last few videos this included I was in a bit of a funk hopefully uh, the remaining videos I have to edit from last year are a bit better uh, I do apologize for the quality of this video and probably the two or three preceding it but nonetheless I do hope you enjoy and I will still put this out for y'all to see okay good morning we's uh, going up Mount Washington today it's a little overcast and foggy, but it should be fine. We're still down, going up the trail right now. But I figured I'd pull over to show you three iconic, you know, asters blooming around this time this year. We came here last year. There's a fat ass slug on that rock over there. I'll go show you that in a second. But you got three iconic, you know, late summer asters here. And indeed, we'll be looking at a pretty rare aster up there in the alpine zone. But these are common woodland species you get, you know, throughout the White Mountains. You got one of my favorite Saladagos, Saladago macrophylla here. Real nice. It's got the big leaves. A lot of the Saladagos will have, you know, more linear leaves. This one, as you can see, has some nice, you know, fatter leaves with the dentate margins. And of course, the uh, the inflorescence is a bit different than what you're used to seeing in Saladago. Uh, but you get a few that do it take on this sort of morphology. Nice big flowers on it. It must have, you know, dumped rain last night, so everything's kind of waterlogged. Not too many bugs out right this second. You got a, a Symphiotrichum here. Let me do this without getting my balls wet. Might be inevitable, you never know. You got a real nice blue-purple Symphiotrichum here. Symphiotrichum Nova Belgii. This is New York Aster. Sometimes called a mountain aster. As you can see, it's got these nice, and of course, I could be mistaken. I'm just going off of what I, what, off of rope memory here. Those nice, almost clasping leaves down there. Kind of ragged, kind of unfriendly to the touch. You know, not, not the friendliest guy in the world to manhandle. And then you get this uh, absolutely iconic plant. You'll see this everywhere, not just up in the mountains. He kind of looks like L right here, but this is Oklamena acuminata. And uh, of course, I will give you the phyleries, you know, on these guys. Those are the phyleries on the Symphiotrichum, the Belgii. I mean, nothing too, nothing too crazy, really, right? Like I said, these Oklamena, these have seen better days. There you go, phyleries. Here are the leaves on this guy. Uh, world wood aster is what it sometimes gets called because if you look at it from the top this kind of look as though it's world and then there's that solid doggo again we'll be seeing a rare solid doggo hopefully when we get up there we're just stream side now not even really into anything subalpine just some moist you know deciduous conifer stuff you got your uh, you got your uh, birches up here you get your firs, you get your spruces, etc. Alright, we'll check in in a little bit. That's just, you know, that's just a couple species we got going on right now. See, I'm asking the important questions like, do you like it when it's nice? I like it when it's nice. Imagine, you know, coming out here and thinking about work or thinking about anything of that nature. You get a nice little jewel pool, as they call this, and the, uh, you know, uh, Nothing really of interesting note here, but you got some firs, you got some spruces, you got some uh, mountain ash and sorbus, and uh, you get a nice, uh, nice mountainside stream here. Okay, we over here by the stream again, and we got an endemic to New Hampshire. We got a population in Nova Scotia too. It's not in bloom right now, but you can go and see the other video I did from up here. This is GM Pecchii right here. It's just one of the, uh, you know, nearly endemic to the White Mountains. You got a population of Scotia, like I just said. Beautiful little yellow flower when it goes off a little earlier in the summer. 
we might get up higher and see this guy still going off. Coming up next to a Nabalus, a rattlesnake root, Asher family. This is Nabalus trifoliatus. Not, not the rare one. You got to go up a little higher to see Nabalus bootsii, which we're going to do right now. But I can't not point out Champechia, one of my favorites. Great plant. Hey, check this out. It's the infructescence of a barely recognizable because he's rotting as he stands. Veratrum variety. Lanthiaceae is the family. And if you're familiar with Trillium, you'll note that Trillium, with its one single flower per plant, will have one single little red fruit upon maturity. But this guy, he's got a whole infructescence going on. Been seeing this all up and down the mountain. This grows all the way down in Georgia too. It's a really weird, interesting plant. Disjunct on the west coast too. Won't get it anywhere in between. Newfound appreciation for this guy. Veratrum variety. Look, he's even got the persistent little three-lobed uh, stigma there. Three carpeled fruit. That's pretty nice. So underneath this nice patch of uh, GM pecchii here, we've got what I believe to be one of the other target species I was looking at. I believe this is Nabal's booty eye. Booty. <clears throat> Some guy named Boot. I thought it was Bootsy eye, but it is booty eye. Uh, why I think that is because unlike the other Nabal's we've been seeing, this guy's got these arrowhead shaped leaves, although he's not really open. Ah, uh, you got, you got one good flower here. Hang on, let's see if I can get that in focus for you. You got one good flower there. Asteraceae, I believe these are in the, these are chicoroides, so these are, you know, distant, not, not too distant, but somewhat distant relatives of dandelions and stuff. They get the bifid stigmas. You like bifid stigmas? Remember, those stigmas are presenting the pollen, because this is an aster. Those anther tubes are down in there. The anthers never distribute the pollen themselves. They put the pollen on the female part, the stigma there, and that's how it gets around. We might find a better specimen. Lots of these are supposed to be hairier, but, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're not quite even up into the alpine, you know, zone there. And then you've got Sebaldiopsis tridentata there. Not in bloom, at least not that I can tell. And a nice cigarette butt, you know, because why the hell not? So, that, that might be Nabal's Bootsy. I'll take a couple pictures of it. We'll, we'll find out after. So the wind is blowing too loud for you to hear me in the original audio for this. This is the flower of Sebaldiopsis tridentata. Now, Sebaldiopsis tridentata is in the Potentilii tribe of the rose family, so it's actually really closely related to strawberries and cinquefoils, including another super rare plant you get on Mount Washington, Potentilla rubinziana, the uh, uh, white mountain cinquefoil, as it's sometimes called. And just note the lovely little tridentate tips in the leaves there. And there you go, there's Saladago Leocarpa. Much smaller than Macrophylla. Lots of leaves going up the stem there. Zoom in for you. There are those phyleries. It's nice, this thing's everywhere. This is probably what, you can see that Euphrasia down there again. We're gonna go hopefully see a, a bigger, cooler member, the family Orib and Casey too. I'm guessing that this might be one of the things that the Euphrasia is parasitizing. But this guy's everywhere, the solid dog. And once I finally got up here and realized what I was looking at, uh, pretty much localized to the high summits down here. A lot of this stuff, you know, the theme of Mount Washington when you do botany up here, is you get a lot of stuff that's basically existing on here, like an island, and you get it much further north too. Look at it, just a rare moment of tranquility. Otherwise chaotic and hostile environment. How about that? We're looking for the little potent here. We can't seem to find it. Of course, those leaves may have some nest. So, who knows? Yeah, see, this is how they do it up at the summit. You come up, they got the nice food court. You don't even have to hike it. You can get in your car and drive. I don't know why you would. But the, uh, they got the chili dogs up here for you, you know? Chili dog. I didn't feel like bothering with the actual camera, but uh, we decided to cut the, cut the adventure a little short. Did a little reading. I realized I probably misidentified at least two of the species I was looking at. So we did see the cutter's goldenrod. We definitely saw the Saldago leocarpa. Uh, didn't make it over to the location where, you know, Castilea uh, Septemtrianalis would be growing. And it seems like that Nabalus, well, a cool alpine version of Nabalus trifoliatus, you know, with what we were seeing, didn't see booty eye, which should be fuzzy. And uh, I messed up my leg. And as you can see, the wildfire smoke's rolling in from Canada. So we're gonna we're gonna head on down out. But if I see anything else cool, I'll be sure to uh, let you know.
And you, you know, you know, my leg, my leg's feeling okay. I just got the cell phone camera out. Well, I'll chop this together in such a way that makes sense. Because even though, uh, with the exception of that Euphrasia, which is non-native, you know, we still saw that cool solid, a couple cool solid doggos. We still saw a cool Nabalus. That's actually a form of Nabalus uh, trifoliatus. It's pretty rare. And of course, you always have, you know, your own standbys like this absolutely dwarfed and diminutive. Ugh. Uh, you know. Rhododendron girl land to come with the fuzzy leaves. How do you not like the fuzzy leaves? You got another little dwarf vaccinium here, another little ericaceous bastard, probably vaccinium vitus idea. Seen some berries on that in some other spots. Got your crumholtzed Abies balsamia. You know, there was people walking around here just being like, oh, it reminds me, the view reminds me of Scotland. And they're just saying, oh, so nothing. And you're full of shit. Look, look down, dumbass. There's more biodiversity in this quadrant of, uh, you know, mountain alpine terrain, tundra, than there is in the average person's lawn. So don't take that for granted. It's a really cool habitat. And, you know, screw it. It's not in bloom, but he's here. You can see those little fruits maturing in these little pincushion leaves. And this is, in fact, one of many, quote-unquote, pincushion plants. You get up here in uh you know the alpine habitat i didn't even mention this guy before he's pretty famous up here around these parts blooms back in june though and of course you have your uh you know what is it well we already talked about this is subaldiopsis tridenti tridentata but uh yeah but there's plenty of good stuff. I'm just, I was trying to find new stuff. I was, I was came, coming, came in a little gung ho. Didn't realize how much Nablus putsii, at least the alpine form of it, really does look like uh, Nablus. Or I'm sorry, the alpine version of Nablus tridentalis looks just like you know, Nablus putsii. Nablus putsii is stark white, and it's got little little hairs on the uh, little hairs in the stem. And it's never making a compound leaf, whereas the uh, you know, the variation on the leaves. Nablus Tridentialis really threw me for a loop there, but uh, we gotta we gotta go to there, and then we gotta go all the way down to there. So let's uh, let's get going. Took the camera back out just because I wanted to get a good macro shot of this guy. I think this is one of the crowberries, Impetrum or Corama, something in one of those genera of Ericaceae. Definitely Ericaceae. He's so small, you would think it's you would almost think it's a moss or something, but then sure enough, not only does it have you know, vasculature, it's, it's, it's woody. It's a tiny little thing with the woody stem. I didn't even notice this coming up or any of the other times I've been up here. Filling in this nice little bank right here. But I haven't seen this anywhere else. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's one of those two genera. You get, uh, you know, sometimes they call them crowberries. And I know that there's there's a couple rare ones and a couple common ones. And you get, you know, it's definitely not Corama conradii. Actually, I could be eating my words there. Crayama Conradia has something you get down to the Cape, and it's more of the likes more of the dry, sandy heathland habit. But uh, yeah, who knows? It's some sort of cute little, cute little woody ericaceous guy, you know? Maybe, maybe don't put the. I, I always do this though, you know. You always gotta, you know, on the way out, you find you find some cool stuff. I could try and cheer myself up a little bit. My leg's pretty. It's actually not that sore. It just looks bad, but. Uh, We'll trudge on. You got Mount Washington in the background. But well, look at the fancy guy. Fancy guy, he probably cut me off. Oh, he's got upside down cones. You know what that means? That's an Abies, Abies balsamea with those super resinous upside down cones. Wish you could get closer to it, but it's, you know, through an impenetrable thicket of his fellow countrymen here. Much like, uh, you know, the, the, the Krumholtz have it. But he's got the cones. I didn't see that coming up. I always wanted to get at least, you know, at least see the cones. They're usually deteriorated or they're just not on the darn things. But right time of year, I guess. Oh, you can see there's some more over there too. Upside down cones. Kind of like a, uh, kind of like a cedar. Not like a juniper or a camas cypress. Like a true cedar uh, in the genus Cedrus, which is in the same family as this. Not the redwood family. I think we'll call it there. Give you a nice panorama shot. We gotta go all the way down there. Probably won't take us as long as you think. By the, as the crow flies, it's not that far. It's just, you know, steep.